So we had a pretty significant winter storm last week. The area where I live wasn't hit too bad. We got about three inches of snow and sleet and about a third of an inch of ice. So the roads have been too bad to run. Today's the first day I've been running. It's been about four days, five days now. So I've really been missing my running. But today I thought I'd come out and talk to you about VO2 Max. Hi and welcome to the Avis Runner. I'm Ralph. Today we're going to talk about VO2 max. So VO2 max is V is volume, O2 is oxygen, and max is the maximum amount of oxygen you can consume in a minute of hard exercise per kilogram of body weight. In fact, the, the units are milliliters per kilogram per minute. So by way of example, if your VO2 max is 40 millimeters per kilogram per minute, and you're a 175 pound person, you can, in round numbers, consume about 3.2 liters of oxygen in a minute of intense exercise. So why is VO2 max important? Well, oxygen is important to our body, right? We need to oxygenate our blood, get those red blood cells to our muscles. But also oxygen is very important in the energy creation process. We use oxygen in those biochemical processes to convert glycogen and glucose to energy we can use in our muscles. So the higher the VO2 max, in other words, the more oxygen we can consume, the more we can oxygenate our muscles, the more we can create energy for our muscles. That means the longer, harder, faster we can run. So VO2 max is very important. It's probably the most important statistic you ought to know about your body. There are studies actually suggest that VO2 max or cardiorespiratory fitness uh, numbers may be the most important statistic in determining a person's risk for a cardiovascular event like a heart attack. It may be more important, important rather than your, if you're obese or diabetic or smoking. So some studies suggest that it's so important that an obese person with a high VO2 max may could live longer than a normal weight person with a low VO2 max. So it's a really important number. You ought to be tracking it, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that, the ways you can do it with a, a wearable or, or a, on your own manually. But it's a really important number for you to know. In fact, the American Heart Association a couple years ago actually came out with a recommendation for healthcare providers to maybe consider that as a vital uh, sign for their patients. So it's really important. And obviously the higher VO2 max, the more fit you are. It's a kind of a measure of your aerobic fitness. The higher the number, the more oxygen you can consume in intense exercise. That means you're more fit aerobically. Now the gold standard for measuring VO2 max is in a laboratory. They hook you up, they measure the oxygen you consume, carbon dioxide, you exhale under a, under a programmed intense exercise treadmill activity. Oh, we're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm sure you're not either. So you have to rely on other means. So those other means would include things like a wearable, like a watch, a smartwatch. Some of the Garmin watches measure VO2 max. Uh, my, my Forerunner 245 does. Uh, smart watches do. I think the Apple Watch does. My Galaxy Watch 4. And some of the Fitbit uh, devices. So VO2 max, of course, is dependent on your fitness level, but also things like age. The older we get, the lower our VO2 max. If you look at some tables on VO2 max, you'll see uh, younger age groups can have a higher VO2 max expected than an older runner. So I was curious, how do these smart watches, for example, calculate VO2 max? They're not, they're not measuring my oxygen input or the amount of carbon dioxide I breathe out. So how do they do that? So I did a little research. I couldn't find much on Fitbit or Samsung or Apple, but there is some information out there about Garmin. In 2020, Garmin acquired a company called First Beat Technologies, and First Beat uh, provides data and algorithms for fitness uh, to manufacturers of devices uh, and, what, and whatnot. And so what they do, they, they actually have a patent on this, and there's a strong correlation, of course, between running speed and amount of oxygen intake, as there is with running speed and heart rate. So they measure GPS, how fast you're going, and your heart rate. And they look for what they call reliable data segments. In other words, can they get uh, 20 seconds of good data where running speed and heart rate have a strong correlation? And they use that information along with your age, your weight, uh, and other factors about you personally to make an estimate of your VO2 max. Now they don't really say in the patent exactly what their algorithm is, uh, but they just kind of use that as an estimate. They can actually extrapolate, maybe calculate your max heart rate and your VO2 max. But they have uh, tested their algorithm versus actual data. In other words, they've tested a bunch of people running them through a couple thousand uh, VO2 max test on a treadmill, measuring the oxygen, measuring the carbon dioxide, and they say that their algorithm, their method is about 95% accurate. If anything, it might estimate a little low. Uh, so if you're using a Garmin to get a VO2 max, your VO2 max could be a little higher, but nothing, nothing measurable, nothing significant, a few percent higher. But uh, I think the key thing is uh, it does give you a pretty good VO2 max 
uh, without going into a lab and actually measuring it. Now you can measure VO2 max on your own, and I'll put a link down below to an article that discusses a manual method of doing it where you time some runs, calculate BMI and some other things like that, and calculate your own VO2 max. But if you have a smart watch or wearable of some sort, that's the easiest way to get your VO2 max. So once you know your VO2 max, you ought to be thinking about how do I improve it? Well, if you're a beginning runner and you're starting out running, you're already working on improving it because you're doing something uh, aerobically and running will increase your VO2 max. But if you're an established runner, you've been running for a while, the only way you're going to increase it is that word intensity. I did a video recently on lactate threshold. I'll cue that up at the end, but some of the things you do to improve lactate threshold will also improve VO2 max. For example, intervals, running intervals, fast, hard intervals, uh, running hill repeats will do that. Running uh, longer runs at a uh, threshold uh, run or tempo run, running harder, running faster, running longer will increase VO2 max. There's other activities you can do too that are kind of anaerobic that will cause you to, your heart to beat hard cause you to breathe hard. For example, strength training. Doing a hard strength training routine can actually elevate your heart rate, elevate your breathing, and will also help improve VO2 max. Cycling, obviously, rowing, all those kinds of things that are intense can help improve VO2 max. So as I said, I cannot find any information on how Fitbit, Apple, or Samsung calculate VO2 max on their, their watches, their devices. I'm sure it's something similar where they're measuring heart rate and, and speed uh, and to get an estimate. So it's probably very similar to Garmin, but it's probably different. Everybody has their own proprietary or, or secret method of doing some of these things. So I think the important thing is if you have a device, keep using it and use it as a comparison. Whether my Garmin gives me a VO2 max of 40 and my Galaxy Watch gives me a VO2 max of 45, doesn't really matter as long as I'm measuring it and using the same device and looking at how it's changing or improving. So if you don't know your VO2 max, please go out and try and figure it out, whether you do it manually or get a, a smart device, smart wearable. Uh, based on my research, I was blown away how much of a predictor it is for cardiovascular health, uh, reducing heart attacks and, and things like that and, and increasing your longevity. So go figure out what it is, start trying to improve it. It's one of the best things you can do. Hey, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate the time I get to spend with you. If you like this video, please scroll down and hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you stick around and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Thanks again for watching and happy running.